Hello, David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. You know where we are. It's the Kiss Kiss Club. That means this is the big event evening. Yeah, Bond in the Bahamas. This is where it's all going to happen. The interviews, the discussion. I've worn my tropical look. It's a little bit of a mix of Spectre and Goldfinger. I've got the Mason and Sons Anthony Sinclair. Yeah, I do. I've got a Turnbull and Asser Voile top. I've got a Turnbull and Asser tie. I've got the Crockett and Jones shoes. And of course, the Omega watch. I think I'm representing, but more importantly, let's see who's representing here. Come on in.
Ladies and gentlemen, that's the introduction to the next portion of our journey. We've got two storytellers that are going to take the stage. We could have uh, our escort come. Martine Beswick and Luciano Paluzzi, please join us. Darling. I'll be gentle. She just asked me to be gentle. So much for being gentle. Wonderful. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for these two wonderful people. Thank you for sharing the time. Thank you for creating the memories as well, truly. We don't talk about that. Um, every story has a beginning. So, do we have another mic? Ah, thank you. Let's hope it does. <laughs> so, Martine, let's, let's start at the beginning. How did you get the role of Paula? Terence insisted that I do it mm. against all wishes of the producers who said we cannot have a Bond girl twice, especially doing two different um, characters. And Terence said, don't be ridiculous. This is an island girl and Martine is an island girl. We have to have her. So he pushed and I got it. And thankfully you did. Now you told me a quick story a couple nights ago. I'd love to you to recount here. You had a very difficult job when you first came to this island. Could you tell people what you had to do? Was what? It to hear? Laying out and... Oh! Oh, you mean that? <laughs> ah, yes. Um, well, t first of all, I hadn't seen the sun in like, oh, I don't know how many years. I was too busy having partying. and So I was gray and I was skinny. And Terence made me come every day. He put me on a call sheet and had me eat and sun myself for two weeks before I had before I started working. I mean, not a bad first job. <laughs> One could get spoiled with that, for sure. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And Luciana, tell us about how you had the role of Fiona Volpe, which is Probably, and I've talked to many people this week, one of the most indelible Bond girl slash baddies. It should be on. Okay. So I had worked with Terence already twice before. And they called me to do a test in Pinewood to play the role of uh, Domino, uh, Claudino Sheko. And I did the test and I went back to Rome, and three months went by, and I get a call, and on the phone is Harry Saltzman and Capri Broccoli. And they say, well, Luciana, I said, well, finally, I said, I haven't heard from you in so long, what happened? Because it was kind of scary, because there were so many girls testing for the roles, hundreds, really. I, I, that's at least what it looked like to me. Anyway, they said, we have good news and we have bad news. And I always like to have the bad news first, so I can end up in a you know nice way. I said, "What is the bad news?" And they said, "You didn't get the role." I said, "How can there be any good news after this?" <laughs> you know. And he said, "But we decided to uh, turn the the character of, of Fiora Volpe into an Italian." And the reason why you didn't get the role of Domino is because you've already done so many movies and we want to launch a new girl every time now that we do a movie. And I said, you know something, this is the best news ever because I'd rather play Fiona Volpe than Domino and it's kind of a drag and, it's, you know, I mean, it's more fun to play a villain. So that's how I got the part. I love it. And by the way, both of you are referencing quite a bit 
Terence Young. And one of the things that many Bond fans have heard over the years is that Terence is James Bond. Yeah. He's like James yeah. Bond. Can you explain that from how well, you work with him? Yes, because all the little touches, all the little nuances, the, the dress, uh, the, the way people were dressed, everything was coming from Terence. He was so sophisticated and so, i never forget when we were shooting here and we were doing the John Canoe uh, scenes and those were forever long because you have to wait for the different uh, tribes, I don't know what you call them, to go back around the village so that then you can uh, have the same kind of shot in which you left over. So uh, instead of um, giving us a trailer, he would uh, put a white tent on the beach with candle lights and the champagne was flowing and, and that's the way Terence was. And it, it was not to love. And he was such a nice man. He treated me like a daughter to the point that when I got married to Michael, he, I, my father had passed. So he came to New York while he was shooting in Chon and he came in for the weekend. He, he flew back, he arrived on a Friday night. We had the wedding on Saturday and Sunday he was back on a plane to go and finish the movie. That was the relationship that I had. And I loved his wife, Dosha. So we, it was a happy family and it was really an incredible human being. Generous, I never seen anybody pay a bill when he was present and he would invite 40 people and, and he was, and I'm not so sure that he could afford it because he, he was spending a lot. He was spending a lot. And so, yes, he could afford it. I mean, uh, this is stupid what I'm saying. But, you know, every day, it's a lot. So I love parents. He will always be my dad. I, it, it sounds, it, it, everybody has kind of the same perception. Martin, same, I mean, oh. you had, Oh wonderful God. moments with this man? Oh, I absolutely. First of all, he fought for me. I mean, he they didn't stand a chance against him. <laughs> he, they just said, he just said, she has to be the thing. And you know, the thing you were talking about, being involved with everything. He was involved in picking, you know, making sure my bikini was what he wanted, the dress, the fabric. He was absolutely there for everything. He really was. And, and of course, the thing is that we just adored him so much. We just let him take over, please, yes, yes, I like whatever, whatever you say, yes, please, daddy. Um, and he, I have to blame him for my fantastic, for the taste of Dom Perignon caviar. Oh, God, I know. I actually had caviar for the first time at his house. I was saying, what is this black thing? I was very, very young. I learned. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> learn. But he had, he had such an incredible character and he was so much fun to be with yeah. and he was so loving and he just, um, he, I remember we were in a restaurant in London and he, I was star st struck. If it, you know, somebody, it was a restaurant that was very famous, I forgot the name now. Michael, where is that you at the office? Yeah, it was off Barclay Square. And all these you know, important star would come in and I would go. And he said, stop it. He said, you are a star. They should be looking at you. You don't have to look at them. It's a good lesson. Yeah. Typical. 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 It's typical. I mean, he just, I, he's the most elegant man I ever knew. And he was also mischievous. And of course, I love mischief people. I mean, Sean was mischief too. I mean, and the two of them together, that, that was hilarious because they really sort of encouraged each other in being naughty. But every now and again, if we got really naughty, especially on the set and, you know, we started fooling around, he'd go, children, children, that's enough. That's enough, and we'd go, Okay. <laughs> By the way, you may not have heard that, but when, uh, when you talked about Sean Connery and Terence getting together, 
uh, Luciano basically brought the poster to life. She goes, watch out. Uh, so let's talk about Sean Connery, of course. You know, you're James Bond. Uh, what was he like to work with? Was he as mischievous as well? Or? I have to tell you, he was a man's man. He, yeah. he really enjoyed to be with the crew at night, with the boys. Yeah. That was his favorite thing to do. Um, he always treated me in such a nice way. So when later, you know, you read, oh, it's not nice to women, I oh. say, what? It's impossible because his character, he was such a nice human being. So, and he was a lot of fun to be around. So I only have great, you know, uh, remembrances of Sean. Yeah. Love that. Too. I mean, and you, you played with him twice yeah, as well. I mean, and, and it's interesting because when I first met him, I was doing, it was like my first major film. And, you know, I was in um, Russia with Love. And the first time we met, we were doing, uh, we'd been rehearsing and rehearsing and we were doing this, publicity shots and we were standing together and if you see the, the, the photographs there is immediately it's like there's a sort of oh, nudge nudge wink wink we'd already started the mischief was present immediately and it was bizarre because I mean I was sort of like you know I'm just I was new I was green he was already a star and then we went on to Thunderball and where that was you know, that was like, eh. I mean, that scene of us in the boat is sort of, it sort of typifies my relationship with with Sean. It, that is exactly what it is. And Terence encourages it. He encouraged everything. <laughs> well, it shows on the screen and it, it, it translates to the audience. Yeah. You know, that type of chemistry between both of your characters and Sean, yeah. I think it's what makes uh, easily Thunderbolt in the top five, but when you when you walked into Thunderbolt, um, and and actually, uh, Luciano, I, I watched an interview where you described this beautifully. It hadn't reached its full crescendo. Thunderbolt really oh. caused everything to explode. Toys and posters. The zenith. It was the zenith. Well, yes. It's the only picture that I've ever been in where you're shooting and all of a sudden the huge cloud comes in and they have to stop and they have to wait for the cloud to go away because it doesn't match anything. Usually you see the producers going crazy, right? Because uh, nothing, everybody was so happy because they already knew that they were gonna make a lot of money. At that point, there was no doubt that the, the series would have not been a suc so successful. The thing is that I never expected it to go on for what, 22, 23? How many, how many Bond movies are there? We're in the 60th year of yeah, James Bond Yeah, but how, right how many movies have been made? There's 25. 25. Give or take. You could argue uh, with me. Uh, and on. And on and we on. go. <laughs> now, now the, the publicity, the explosion around Thunderbolt and the press, there's some wonderful photos behind the scenes of you uh, and Claudia walking together mm -hmm. in bikinis. I mean, was that... And, and this is behind the scenes. I know you all like this discussion. Was it a nuisance? Was it exciting? I mean, what were your feelings about all that? Do you know, we actually, and it's interesting because I was, I was talking to, to Fiona, which is Jason's wife, and I'm saying, you know, they're so wonderful because I love, I so appreciate women. And Bond girls really like each other. And when we meet, it is always this, camaraderie, this love that we have. I mean, I do not, I don't know any Bond girl who I don't absolutely love. I mean, it's just amazing. And so I, there's a, I don't know, there's just a sweetness. Yes. I still talk to Ursula Andres and Marion Dabo. Yeah, we see them all the time. We see them all the time. So for me, it was sort of, yeah, it's, we can, we can. It is a club. It is. It is a club. Actually, right. what, what I say is Bond girls bond forever. Well, I like that. That could almost be a title of a book. <laughs> or at least a movie. I would go and see it twice. <laughs> well, Mariam Diava did a book called Bond Girls Are Forever. She did. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think a TV special. Yes, exactly. All right, we have to talk about the Bahamas. I don't know if you can tell from the heat. We're here. 
Um, I wore a wool suit. Listen to me. It's it's a beautiful heat. I've never felt such a dewy skin layer. I love it. You know why? Never look so young. Why am I know I'm in the Bahamas? What's that? Because the in inhabitants. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a foreigner. <laughs> I still don't work. The the Bahamians people are the best. They are the nicest in every in every Absolutely. Uh, status of. The only kindness and, and generosity and niceness, and so um, that's what makes it very special to me. And that that never changed. So, I mean, that was back in the '60s as well as now. I heard you both say that earlier in the week. Um, but talk to us when you arrive in the Bahamas in the 1960s. What's your perception? What are your thoughts? Well, first of all, it was like, oh my God, I'm in heaven. I mean, they, we hired, were you on the plane? Yes, we all were. It was, it was Claudine, you and I, and everyone. They hired a plane and brought us out. That's what I remember. I don't know if you were on that. But we literally were on a plane hired to come to the Bahamas. And it was just, we stepped off and went, it was wow. And that was, it was a wow for the whole time. And especially with, you know, Terrence heading it out. And you know you were talking about the sort of the, the, the uh, tent with champagne and Kevin. Well, lunch was not a box lunch. <coughs> lunch under the coconut trees, tablecloth, and lunches. I mean, hello. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about the characters. Um, Fiona Volpe, and easily, again, I said this earlier one of everybody's favorites. Um, it, a lot of it has to do, and here's an argument that you probably have heard. Many people argue that in Thunderbolt, the main bad guy is actually Fiona Volpe. She tells Largo what to do. Am I wrong? Yeah, baby. Right? It's, it's defensible. Um, you exude a certain amount, not even a certain amount, a, quite a bit of power in the role. Is that something that you prepared for in the role? No, the fact is that I'm such a sweet, sweet girl that, yes. <laughs> that to do something that was bad and nasty just was so much fun. That's it. That's the only reason I, I didn't prepare. I just went with it. That's so it. the fact that you were loving it, it I, comes across. I was loving it. I oh was my gosh. loving it. Yeah. And Martine, we have to talk about your character, Paula, because we had a conversation, you and I, the other night, oh. and we said, you know, put Paula in today's world. When you think of like Lashana Lynch, you could have been a female Felix Leiter easily. I know. Right? What a shame. <laughs> I mean, unceremoniously dismissed, I'd say. Really? Right? I mean, you know, killing myself for my country, really. What a way to go. <laughs> Dreadful. <laughs> but until that happened, what a character. And I'll ask you the same question. Uh, certain preparation, Would you? Were, was there a motivation behind the way you played the role? Actually, it came from the relationship I had with Sean and probably with, with Terence. It was just about, you know, I'm going to do this right now. And basically, it was just, there was a mischief behind all of it. But there was also a sort of a, a focus. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't really prepare. Did you prepare? I didn't prepare. I didn't. Uh, I prepared later in, you know, in other roles, but no preparation was needed for this. I, I am loved that you took <laughs> something within you, whether you were having fun yes. or you just yes. took a bit of yourself and put it out there, and this is what we got. Yeah. That's I mean, it. well done, well done, right, everybody? <laughs> no, no, they have to. There are, there's an applause sign behind us. You just can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> Luciana, I do have a question for you yes. because this is going to be a bit of a Barbara Walters moment, but you've, you Oops. brought your wonderful grandchildren here yes. to experience this celebration. It's really about generations and it's about the, the longevity of the franchise. Why, in, in your mind, has James Bond lasted 60 years? Well, they don't have a choice. Uh, to, uh, it's on television over and over again, so it's not like it disappeared. From the screen so I get you know people that I still get so many fans letters that 
I said, well, why? I mean, I'm so old, and look at these people that are like, toy. they show me the photos. I fell in love with you because my father took me when I was six, whatever. <laughs> then I said, oh my God. So anyway, it's just, it's because the movies are good. I think it's, it's a fun time to go to the movies and see a Bond movie, that's it. So I think it keeps on going because they also they keep on making them. So people that go to see the last one, then they want to see the the one before. And so we're still in the minds and uh, thoughts of many people from Germany. For I, I get them from everywhere, from from everywhere. It's amazing. But it, it's it is, nice. It's a global phenomenon that extends. And Martin, same for you. I mean, the franchise. Why has it existed this long? Amazing, and then we can't. We keep saying, and we turn to each other. I mean, I was just in Switzerland for a, for another event, which was wonderful, just delicious. And Caroline and I were there, and she's like my she's like my sister, my main. I have a lot of sisters, but she's my main. <laughs> she's my main sister because I see her all the time. But we turned to each other and said, "This is amazing. How how long is this going on for?" Now, we're waiting for the next bond. We have ideas. Oh. What, 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 what are the ideas? What are the ideas? Mm. <laughs> Luciano goes, what are the I ideas? Want, I want Henry Cavill. Oh, did anybody see the commercial that was released this morning with Henry Cavill, where he walks towards a DB5, and he says, no. and he says some things are worth waiting for, and he gets in a car and he drinks his botanical water, which is his company. Um, that was quite a hint. What? Maybe you'll get your wish. I don't Ooh. know. I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> but it could happen. Do you have any ideas of who no. you would think? No. I was very upset because I read somewhere that he was going to be a woman. Oh. And, yeah. and yeah, so I sent an email to Barbara. I said, Barbara, what are you talking about? A woman, that's not, it, can, it cannot be, it has to be a man. And, uh, and she said, don't worry, it's not going to happen. Oh, thank, God. thank goodness, because I would so not look good in a dress. I would have to change my entire outfit. <laughs> no, I've seen it. It's not pretty. Well, the thing about doing a woman, it's all very well and good to do Doctor Who, to turn into a woman and a man and a, you know, black, white, orange. It's all very well, but you did not bond. Sorry, he cannot be. It has to be Henry Cavill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad we're recording this, by the way. We're going to send this out to the world. <laughs> uh, this, this question is a bit of a selfish one. Mm -hmm. um, Martin, we'll start with you. You have both been so gracious, and not just over this last week, but for years, with the fans, the Bond fans. What is it that connects you to the Bond fans? Well, because they've been so loyal for so long. And there's something I really, I, I, I talked to Luciano about it. I said, you know, I really like doing this. I like having the interaction with the fans because it just, it, it was a very special time for me to do two Bond films. It was very special. And for this to be, for, for us to have this sort of constant reunion, uh, rapport with fans, it's just, I don't know. It's sort of it's special. It's very special, and I and I and I thank you all, really, because it it keeps it alive. You know, thank you. I just want to add something. When we do these autograph shows, um, all the how you say the, the money that comes in, I give it to charity for dogs, and but. That, you know, I can do that on my own, but it's nice to have an extra help and do it while it's not costing you anything, you do, to have extra money. But the thing is that when I leave the autograph show at the end of the day, I am five foot nine and, it's, and I'm really five foot three. So uh, the, the love that they show to you and the admiration and the kindness that they show to you, it makes you feel so good, you know? So that's why we have this rapport, right, yes, Martin? Definitely, yeah. definitely. Well, I will say this, um, to kind of 
put a finale on this discussion. The admiration is so mutual. There's more than an adoration for you. There's a respect, there's a deference, and we wanna just thank you so much for everything you've done, but not just back then, but now, whether it's charities or connecting with the fans, you do us so well. So thank you so much. You. Ladies and gentlemen, thank Luciana you. and Martin, give them a hand. Thank you guys, thank you so much. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.